Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to MZJ Group where tech, lifestyle, sports and entertainment are all discussed. The topic of our today's video is ever got scam? I mean, as we all have seen or witnessed scam in one way or the other, like today we will be sharing our own stories and also some common scams that people use to target individuals like in different ways and we will also share some tips to stay safe from such scams. I'm joined by my friend Mustafa. Hey, how's it going Mustafa? How are you doing? Hey, how are you, Malik? How are you doing? Good? Have you got scammed yourself? Ah, uh, yes. And I was about to ask you that question as well. Like, have you ever been a victim of a scam? And if yes, please share it with us and I will share my own story. Yeah, I think everybody got scammed, to be honest. Like, like scams are everywhere now, from your email, from your smartphone, from day-to-day transactions people getting scammed so every i think everybody got scammed but the thing is like how much you are getting scammed with is it like a lot of money is it like something that is actually like you will regret so it depends on the type of scam i guess yeah these scams that come like in a different format like as you said like emails phishing texts uh i i mean fake cra calls or people yeah. coming to your door and then just knocking and asking for charity stuff so I have this funny story of my own experience. Like I wasn't scam. I, I didn't like the guy was not successful to scam me. But I have this funny st story that I protected my own self. Like I was basically smart and intelligent enough. So this guy, like it was, it was actually night, like nine something or ten p.m. He came to our door and he started knocking. I mean, I opened the door and he was like, he started like showing his iPad. He basically introduced himself that he was collecting money for poor orphan kids in poor, poor countries and I, yeah. I quickly realized that, that this is definitely a scam like but I was still like willing to help him for some reason I don't know why like I just wanted to give him like a ten dollar so the funny thing was that this guy was not accepting my cash this guy was saying that could you please input your credit card number here because our employer doesn't allow uh, allow you guys like to give us a cash because they can no longer like keep track of it like so please like give me your credit card number then I, at that point i got angry I yeah. him, like, does he have the swiping machine to put to no, swipe your credit card no no no, no. they didn't have any he swiping was... machine he basically had his own ipad and his own website and he asked us like he asked me that please open an account with us oh <laughs> and then input your credit card information there like i open like, open an account with their own website to help like oh. poor kids and i immediately mean, like the funny thing was that this guy kept insisting like even though i told him like I'm 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 only gonna give you cash because I felt bad for that guy. He was just look, like knocking door to door at night, but this is mm -hmm. not a good thing, you know. Like we should never like encourage like bad behaviors. So uh, I, I asked him. Like, at that at that time, after that like after insisting multiple times, I, I had to get a little bit aggressive with him, and then he left. Uh, yeah, and okay. then he left. Yeah, so yeah, so this is one of my stories. Yeah, sorry. Did you take the 10 bucks or not? No, I didn't give him a 10 bucks at okay. the end. Yeah, yeah. He's saying the credit card scammer, not money cash scammer. Yeah, like, yeah, he, this guy was like a credit card scammer. Yeah, I, I thought like yeah. this guy took my generosity as a uh, as a, as an easy target. Like he thought like I was dumb enough to give him like my credit card number. So, yeah. Yeah, that's funny, man. Yeah, that's funny. So... Dude. By the way, those scam, those scams, uh, it might sound funny, but it's actually real, so... Yeah, <laughs> like, unfortunately, some people well, they, fall for it, you know? Yeah, and uh, people, yeah, it is actually because you when, when, like, when you, when you talk about somebody getting scammed, you will laugh at him, but trust me, like, when it happens to you, and you did, you did, you do get scammed, man, you will feel so, like, so ashamed of yourself, like, why did I fall for this, right? Yeah. But in general, I know it's, it's funny, but still, people should get cautious about these things, so... Definitely. Actually... Uh, so in my case, actually, the, I I got scammed like uh, multiple times, but <laughs> oh, that's but, not a good thing, Mustafa. Yeah, I know it's not a good thing, but at least like some of them, like it wasn't like a big chunk of mine. The biggest scam I got scammed with is the 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 most recent one, actually. The story about that is um, we I went online and then we checked for a Samsung. It was like a new release and it was the mm. big thing. We met actually in McDonald's and then this guy brought the uh, the phone. It's working and it's fine. It's just like the ad, you know, what it says. Mm -hmm. And checked it at that time. Like I put my SIM card in, it runs, it makes calls, and everything was fine. And then after a, a week almost, like the phone suddenly uh, I got a, nothing. nothing yeah, it stopped working. I didn't even get a message. It just says your SIM card is not identified. Yeah. That I, my SIM card the phone, yeah. 
exactly black is the phone. I thought there's something wrong with the SIM card. Even I went to the SIM card, like I went to Bill, I told him like, what's going on, what's going on? And they said, yeah, this this is a stolen phone. This is the key. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what, but nothing, the guy told me, like he didn't say nothing. He didn't even call the police. He said, yeah, it's not you. That many people get get this type of scam. So what basically he does, he sell, he buys the phone from Bill or whatever. And then uh, there's, I think he will, he will pay on top of the price, I think 100 or 200 dollars. They call it lost lost refund fees or something like that yeah. so when the phone gets lost or stolen they will uh, they will just lock it from there i don't know how they just lock it so it's not usable anymore so yeah. what yeah what happened is yeah i i lost i bought it like at that time 600 dollars and it did it that's still working but i can't make phone calls with it so did you try to yeah. contact that guy again of course, many times. The phone that he used, then I realized it was like a free fake number. Oh, okay, fake number, yeah. Yeah, fake number. Like this, so, yeah, lost the money. I know about these scams. Like what they do is like they report the phone as stolen, and then uh, basically like get the profits from you. Say for example, they sold it five hundred to you, and if they want to get a, like a, because they are already under a contract to their own network provider, so they will get the five dollar cash from you and then pay like two hundred dollar fine something for the stolen phone so that they can get another phone. In the middle, they will save like a three hundred dollar something. Yeah, I have seen like these cases before too. Like even like when I was trying to buy a Samsung S8 for myself from Kijiji, this guy, I was kind of like suspicious, like because I told him like don't or, or like we shouldn't like shouldn't we both go to the uh, I think his network was Sastel. So I asked him, like, let's go to Sasa together. I will pay you the 500 cash there, but you need to pay that 500 or 400, whatever. That's that's the remaining balance. You have to pay it to the Sasa uh, network there. I mean, the Sasa office there. But this guy was like, you know what? Maybe not. Like, I, I, I can promise that I'm willing to pay that remaining balance fee. Uh, like, <laughs> I'm a legit guy, this and that. That made me, like, suspicious, and I had to pass it. Yeah, the best thing is to go to Sasta to like to the provider of the phone mm -hmm. and then do the agreement there. And then even after all of that, like take a picture of his driver license. This is what I did actually. Mm -hmm. Uh for the for the next time I bought the phone, I I it was I think it is it was from with Sastel as well. Or maybe oh. yeah, uh, I forgot. But anyways, so we went there and then they checked it and they said still the guy still could lock it because it still is under his name. So it doesn't matter by the way. If you know that even even he goes to Sastel, like the initial owner is always in control of that phone as so long it as it, that thing matters as long as he has not paid his um uh entire balance fee for example if they get a phone for 900 dollars so the contract is like two years he has to finish that balance it's like once he finishes that balance and he sells it to you he can no longer lock the phone because that's useless no, but I was told he still could be could lock the phone because he's the initial owner. The initial owner always get the the access over the phone. Like I don't know why. That's what I was told. Anyways, so I told him like you heard the guy. Like I can't do it because I, I told him about my story. Man. I told yeah. him I got scammed stuff like that. He said I'm not like I, I'm not gonna do it. I told him like but I can't trust nobody. You know what? After what happened to me, well, I told him this case, just give me your driver license. I'll take a picture of it and then. Like if something happens, I know I could report you, you know. And actually, he was willing. Man, imagine like he gave me his driver mm -hmm. a picture of it. At that time, I felt like confident enough to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have like this story about my neighbor. Uh, I, so they were basically new to Canada at that time, and they asked like my help. So they received like this call, and they were totally new at that time. So they received this call from a woman, I believe, if I remember correctly. And she was saying that, oh, you guys are new, you should be applying for this uh, benefit, and I need information from you guys. And I thought maybe this is legit. Maybe this is legit because these guys are already new and they needed like uh, government assistance. So I tried to help uh, answer the phone, and I was answering the question like slowly by slowly. They were asking like some more and more sensitive inf information. At that point, I realized that wow, this is getting like more and more and more like sensitive, like or personal, like. I tried to then ask them back questions and they were not that helpful in answering me back. So then I quickly told them like, I'm not 100% entirely sure that how come like you guys call us back? Uh, how come you guys like call these guys that you guys are offering like some sort of benefit? I need to make sure that you guys are like a legit organization, you're from government. And when I asked them back questions, they were not helpful. And I just hanged up on them before hanging up. 
my dad actually talked with those guys. My dad called them like in like fraud fraudsters. Like mm-hmm. when they heard the word fraudster, they immediately hanged up on us. So that was super funny. Like, but my question is that these guys were totally new. How come their information was shared with scammers? Like how come scammers got hey, access yeah. to their data? Or their phone call information. I don't know. Actually, I have no idea how they get your first name or even even your address. They could get it somehow. I have. So yeah, I think uh, since it's something linked to Facebook or if you have Facebook or 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 Instagram, I think they could track you down somehow. I'm not quite sure, but there is a way, you know. So I have this crazy theory that I could be wrong or I could be right. So. The way they get their data is like from different format. Like one way that I know is that through your own phone apps. So here's the thing. You have your phone apps. You do not trust all of them. And like those other formats, for example, if you have installed like a calculator, this is not yeah. developed like by a major, major uh, developer. Like even like major developers, man, they share our own data. You know, we know we're no longer safe, let alone these small other, other developers. Like they definitely share it like with other data collection agencies like for sake of advertisement and then they send it to another uh, third party or fourth party and then your data basically flows like your browsing habit like even your personal phone number like I'm pretty sure like these phone apps can easily get access to your phone information like phone number sim card information your location and stuff like that and then they will share it to third party fourth party probably the fifth or sixth party they are another organization which basically buy your data and then try to scam you back like by calling they basically buy yeah. these data in bulk and then start like distributing it, distributing it to their employees so that they will call people their agents yeah cuz i have this because when i was like like this recently like avast antivirus like they were basically involved like agreement with the, another organization called the jumpshot data yeah they made this agreement that when you're installing the app jumpshot data collection agency they will actually get access to your browsing habits or your other activities this actually ca- caused like a backlash because a lot of people were basically criticizing that how come avast like a biggest antivirus like company be involved like in sharing people's like data with other parties so and because of that they stopped doing that they're no longer doing that like so imagine like if these big organizations are like sharing our data for sure like those other small organizations like the sixth or seventh party like they will definitely get access to it they did that because there's a profit out of it if they share the data so they won't do anything for free right so exactly. sure that, yeah so there's, there's a profit at the end yeah it is true it is a good thing that's why man there's a funny thing when you install some for example a game you know on your phone like yeah. the game require access to your <laughs> to your your photos or your personal files even your contents man contacts yeah remember. yeah exactly. but they ask, all of these things and even your location man like you don't need to play a game to do to give access to this information to them like what's the point you know yeah at that time it's so too shady so you just delete it like i rather delete it than play it you know i don't care anymore so yeah it is true man i feel yeah it's true who knows man even if like even if they don't they don't even need like a permission they could be silently like collecting everything from you maybe, maybe. you never know that maybe that's know, the case man. As long as it's installed, maybe they have full access of what you're doing on your phone. Yeah, you never know. So it is true. Even when I heard those, especially those, you know, those friendly apps, they called like, take a picture of yourself and then you see yourself in 40 years, what are you going to look like? <laughs> yeah, but take a picture of your hand and then we'll give you like your palm and then we'll give you your future, what it says. Uh, those apps, I heard like many stories about them. Like if you take a picture, it goes to the, you know, to people and then you could, because see most of these new devices they could unlock it with your face they call oh, face yeah, yeah, yeah. hello, it's hello. Yeah. so when they have uh, pictures man it is like uh, easy access for them they even man the uh, the ipad security they they figured their way around it like the face id oh they they, they tried to put a picture and didn't work so what they did they printed the picture in a in a laminated format so it's just it's a plastic format oh. and they submerged, submerged it in a jar of water and then uh, yeah and then they place it in, the, in front of the camera so this jar water effect would give a three di- three dimensional picture of the face oh. and it's un- <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it unlocked the phone so there is always a ways around it is there any demonstration available on youtube or some videos so like we can watch there is, yeah there is there is if you just google like ways to surpass face id you'll find like none of them 
That's even we so yeah there, even windows hello there is many yeah oh. there's many that buys them man yeah it does yeah there is so be careful like where you what are you going to provide your like where are you going to provide information or going to share your information even facebook nowadays is getting dangerous but what you're going to do you know <laughs> that's mm -hmm. why you always keep checking your banking account like regularly don't leave it like keep yeah. checking it like all the activities something going on you should always report it you know definitely definitely and then this recently like you know there are some coronavirus scams as well you know like such <laughs> as like some people receiving calls like from scammers that they will assist them with serve applications and in turn they will charge them 400 or 300 from their serp check or even like yeah. there are some fake websites that claim to send testing kits or remedies or cleaning products to your home or even oh. like uh there, there was like this video i was watching like um uh, from, from global news like they were basically like interviewing like a scammer he didn't know that he was secret secretly being filmed so this guy was offering like um uh air filtration device they were um, from amway manufacturer and mm -hmm. he was selling it uh, uh, like not like from that big company like he was selling it from by himself like so like, there was no like a contract or some sort of like a partnership between him or Am amway air filtration or air purifier he was basically like sending it himself and this guy basically claimed, like, made a big, big, bold uh, claim that this thing filters 99% of COVID-19 germ particles, like, basically cleans, like, like, everything that's, like, in your home, it basically cleans or filters the air particles in your home. And that's, like, uh, a big, big claim, like, because the manufacturer themselves, like, they mentioned that this is not, like, a filter device for COVID-19. It's only used to uh, remove your household odors or bad smells from your home the the, the the crazy thing about this device is that it costs like 2300 canadian dollar man mm -hmm. so this guy, I, don't like it's going for. I don't know how, 2300 canadian dollar like i don't know how many people this guy try uh, scammed but uh, but like if you watch this video on global news page he, he didn't know that he was being secretly filmed like after those guys revealed that oh we are actually reporter from global news anti-scam team this guy immediately like stood up from his seat like he was like starting like saying that oh this is against like my rights like i have my own freedom like as well that you shouldn't be recording me this and that and then he left to scam. <laughs> his own freedom to scam exactly exactly man can you imagine that you know yeah people do anything man to scam you nowadays like you could even get scammed without even knowing that you're getting scammed seriously yeah like there's some evidence that people are getting scammed without even knowing how did they get scammed in the first place actually my brother mm. he got actually scammed with a uh, with a what I, he got like a, loans on his credit card with oh. no like, like i don't know even how i don't even know how he got scammed anyways he called western union he said what's going on and stuff he said yeah you were like like you you, you took a loan or after, i think it's 200 at that time now it has interest like he didn't even he didn't even, he didn't even get like any notification like he got a loan or something mm. like nothing he got so he just got up they took somebody obviously took a loan out of his name i think it was 200 dollars mm -hmm. and then after he didn't know about it like suddenly he was you know checking his online banking and then he suddenly went into the credit check and he saw his credit check was so low and then he was checking you know investigating why it's so low and then he he realized that somebody took a loan out of his um, his account and then he didn't pay it five mm -hmm. years so it's like a thousand dollars now Ooh. and then yeah man he called he called and then he talked with people and like he called many times and then people were like he said that like, it's under your name like you're the guy I said yeah i'm the guy even the location man even the location tell him that like, you were living there like you were in ottawa so you were living giving the exact location and it's all true but he told him like i didn't do it it wasn't me you know mm. and then after a call and that a long discussion and even they, they told them like what they didn't even tell me like you swear you didn't tell me like there was a loan taken under my name Mm. So after talk, then they actually they refunded to him. But imagine if he didn't know about it till now. So that's like, crazy. Like yeah, yeah. So your scam is ongoing process if you didn't know about it. That's why like you have to dig deep into your banking account. Maybe there's a loan under your name. Maybe there is a. I don't know how they play it. You know, there's many ways, man. Like there's maybe, man. I heard a story, but in in UK, what happened? There was a guy scamming for scamming people with uh, one penny. It's almost one. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, no, a serious true story. I swear to God, he was one penny or one cent. Mm -hmm. So what happened? He came back a uh, hundred person or more than that, and he takes every day 
one penny. Oh. And so you don't, yeah, so you don't even feel it. Like you know, if you you don't feel it, like when you open your bank account, you won't feel the change. You know, it's still the same amount. Ah, oh, smart. Guy. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So he doesn't feel that when, when you are getting scammed, you don't feel that you are getting scammed anyway. Exactly. Because one, right? Mm -hmm. But then if you are scamming a hundred, like more than a thousand percent, like imagine how much money you can make, you know? Yeah. And then they caught, uh, yeah, they caught the guy. But it's a, it was a smart scam. I could give him this. Wow. <laughs> because like, yeah, people will never check if one penny comes out of your bank account. You know, it won't have an effect. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. So here's like another scams uh, that I know, like fake jobs. Uh, so. Uh, I know like a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine with whom I went to school. So he, he actually uh, sent me this job application to me. He said that I got accepted and they're offering me this job. But the thing is that I need to pay like 3000 for the training fee. And I was like, what? Because they were offering him like $75,000 per year for the salary. But in return, he had to pay like um, $3,000 for training. So I told him like, normally what the, the procedure is that the employer themselves like they offer you training for free or if some companies they don't have the budget to offer you training for free they will instead instead like deduct uh training fee from your salary like in no way or shape exactly. like you shouldn't be like offering like three thousand dollars up front that doesn't make any man, sense the messed, up part, the messed up part before you complete this uh, messed up part man this guy is looking for a job like he needs money obviously <laughs> and he's getting <laughs> this is the best part if you think about it. <laughs> man, those guys, they don't have any mercy. They don't have any emotions, man. I get exactly the same scam, man. Like, they call it like you're looking for a job, so you're like need, you in need of money, you know? Exactly. And they still tell you of what you own left, you know? It's so messed up. Anyways, yeah, go ahead. But it's so messed up if you think about it. Yeah, so I told him, like, just give me, like, five to ten minutes, and I will just try to research about this company. I found a lot of like discussion on Reddit website and bad man. Everybody was basically saying that it's a fraud website and they were leaving like negative reviews. I just screenshotted that page and sent it to him. And then I told him like, this is your answer. And then man, this guy thanked me a lot. Like he was like, I saved him. But I don't like, he was kind of like willing to do it because he wasn't getting any response back from, from his previous applications. And I was, I think he was willing to do that for like, I'm not exactly sure, but probably who knows, man. Yes, if you are so desperate to find a job and you need one, right? And yeah. people are, yeah, you are you are in need one, and like you have to pay your rent, you have to pay your bills, right? Yeah. And you are in desperate of one, so I want to do anything if you find a good offer, right? Yeah. And by the way, if you see an offer, too, yeah, too good to be true, like always question that. Yes. When you said five thousand dollars, like if if he knows like it's very it's too good to be true with training and stuff like that, like he always put, should put put a question mark on there, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And there are also some fake jobs on Indeed as well, like, you know, like my father himself, like he applied for some jobs like three, four years ago on, I think on SaaS job, even Indeed as well, like there are some fake jobs as well. So he got a call back from one of those companies and they basically told him that, please give us like your SIN number. The funny thing is that your SIN number should be given like once the job is offered and you accept it. These guys, like, it didn't even set up the interview, but this guy, the guy was like asking for SIN number. I was like, oh, good luck with that. And no, we are shame. We will be willing to give you that our send number. Yeah, but this camera is so thirsty, man. They're yeah, so thirsty. Like at least they should have waited like for played it more and more and more, more natural. But they were super yeah. thirsty, as you said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Funny man, yeah, it's yeah. This is, I feel the worst type of scam you could fall off, fall for is the job wise, man. Yeah. Because see, when you apply for a job, first of all, you're gonna submit your resume, yeah. and when you submit your resume, if it's a fake job, they will have all the information, man. That's scary, by the way. They will have your name, your address, your what you did. So it is kind of scary, you know. Especially, man. That's why, with like my case, when I apply for a job, like I always make sure, like I go to the like I copy the name of the job and I go to, is this, this company legit? Is it out there? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's all the key of verification. You always make sure that is the company really exists, you know? Yeah. And that's just it's a good place to check as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then some people also come up with fake checks, you know? Do you know how it works? Fake checks? Fake checks, yeah. How is that? So, so they basically what they do is like they send you a fake check to your mail address. Yeah. And then they contact you as well. So they contact you. They, they tell you that, could you please deposit this check? Because we want to avoid like bank fees, which are high for us. 
So if you deposit this check, you can keep the two hundred money, two hundred dollar for yourself, and then send us back the entire money. So you know what that check, like the check process, like it takes three to five days for the verification process, you know. But the money will instantly come to your account, you know. So so for example, mm-hmm. let me give you an example. For example, there's a fake check of like three thousand dollar, and the guy tells you that please uh, keep the five hundred, but return back the twenty five hundred. So when you deposit that fake check on your bank account, it will show like. Three thousand, the entire amount. But the bank process, like it's according to the law, like the money will instantly show up on your account, even though the, if the check is fake, it will take like the bank like three to five business days for them to realize or verif- verify it. So, with, uh, so when oh. you give, so when you transfer back the money and and when you think that okay maybe I'm saving like five hundred in the middle, actually you're giving back your own money, you know. Exactly. Yes, it's a not real. It's a scam. It's, it's a, it's a but that's also. Yeah, but this is also the fault of the bank, to be honest. Like, they it's should the do it away. Uh, like, yeah, I, I don't understand. Like, if if like these money, like this money, should not be instantly deposited in your exactly. money, like in, into your bank. Like, they should wait at least three to five days once the check is verified, and then that money should show up. It shouldn't instantly show up. But that's the law when I was researching in North America. Wow, I didn't know that. To yeah. be honest, that's the first time. Yeah, yeah, it's like, and then another like yeah. common online scam is about the e-transfers. You know, like when you're selling something on on Kijiji or Marketplace, some people offer you mm-hmm. with the e-transfer options. Like now, like I, I personally, I'm totally against like e-transfer if, if it's for something big. Like if if you're selling like a vehicle or something like worth thousand dollar, I would definitely right. like recommend against like using e-transfer because. So here's the thing: what they do, so. Mm-hmm. If you're not registered registered for auto deposit, uh, somebody can actually like uh, send you e-transfer, for example, and then they will get the item, and once they sit in their vehicle, uh, once they leave the place, they will quickly like cancel uh, the uh, payments. Yes. Yeah. So before you yeah. to before you accepting that cash uh, or that transaction, they will just take the money back. They will re- like they will reverse the entire process, you know, before you accepting the e-transfer payment, you yes. know. That's something to watch for as well. So that's why either either re- register for auto deposit so they can no longer reverse the payment, or just stay away. F- or just stay away yeah, from me transfer. Just, no, just take the guy to the bank and then have the deposit right away to your to your bank. That's another option. That's what we do. You know, when you buy something big, mm-hmm. don't get even checks, man. Just take the guy, tell him like, let's go to the bank together. I'll take you on my gas. Yeah, I'll pay the gas even. Just go. Let's go there. And then do a direct deposit without you know checks or e transfer yeah, or whatever you call exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. I personally go with cash as well, even there like some fake cash yeah, as well. Cash. Yeah, but usually with cash it's difficult for them to cheat. Yeah. To fake. Yeah, yeah, because I was reading like this article like I think two three days ago. It happened in Alberta. So basically, this guy, this camel, was selling his vehicle. And and okay. and then, like when people were messaging him to see the vehicle, he was basically saying that please do an e transfer for me uh, of 500 amount, and then I will hold the vehicle for you and then show it at this time. So basically, he got like e transfer payment from three guys, and the car was no longer even like available on the KGG. Basically, that car was probably even fake, man. All those three guys they lost are, like 500. They never. Wait, 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 are people this dumb to do this smooth? Like, why would you send him money for something? Like it wants key. Yeah, uh, I don't like if some people are like if if they're like super desperate, they're willing to do that. I don't understand it. like why like you shouldn't like deposit money upfront even if you haven't like if you if you have not seen the car like you shouldn't deposit that money man. Go and see the car once you're totally satisfied and then you can give him like a uh, exactly like yeah. upfront deposit. Exactly. What well, that's that's new man. I don't know why people even do that. So this guy that's, earned that's... like fifteen hundred out of nowhere from nothing. Man, the, the most recent scam, let me talk tell you about the most recent scam, man. I'll, that, this is the freshest one that I heard of. Mm. What people do, man, like, it's, it's so messed up, man, in a way that you won't believe it, but it's true, man. If you even Google about it, it's out there, like, a lot. Mm. What they do, they go, there's, you know, GoFundMe, you know, you know yes, that page yes. for. Mm-hmm. So there was a guy, there was, it's, it's a scam, by the way, it's a scammer. A scammer plus, man, they, he should go to jail for this, for yeah. what he's doing. Anyway, so what he did, he has, he has a dog. And he broke, uh, he broke the dog legs. Oh, all of them. what the hell! I, I swear to God, 
he broke all of his legs and then he said and he put a golf like he put a page on the golf on me page and he said that i'm so desperate my dog has a car accident and he lost all his legs and please like pay me this i want to do his surgery and that he shows a legit video of his dog suffering you know without legs and in pain and stuff and like and then he puts this uh, GoFundMe page, he uploads it, and actually people are, people, like, it's, uh, from an emotional case, people exactly. actually do, 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 like, do give him money, you know? Man, he, he collected, like, $1,500, $15,000, 15, so 15000 out of the scam. Wow, that's so messed up, like, that, uh, he, that guy I, deserves, like, jail time, no way, man. They, and they caught him, and they caught him, and they put him on, like, they, they put him on the spot, I think it's with Global, if you just Google about it, they, they, like they caught him on the street. They were waiting for him just to exit his house. They told him, "Why would you do that?" And he got like he got fined, and he got the, even the money. The people like who pay, who donated to him, they got their refund back. But then, like they interviewed him, "Why would you do that?" and stuff. He, he man, he doesn't even say nothing. But he didn't serve any. I don't think he served any jail time. What? The and he just got fined. Yeah. How did they? Except, know? How did they find that this guy was scamming? I don't know. Somebody probably reported him. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, but yeah, that's so messed up, man. Like that's even so an animal. Up, exactly. Yeah, I heard the same case with a cat, man. There was a cat also. Like this guy, like punctured the both both of the cat eyes. What the hell? I swear, to, I swear to God, man. He punctured both of the guys, the cat eyes, and he put a GoFundMe raising money just to to do a surgery for the cat. It's so messed up. People people even film it. Like he filmed like his suffering of the cat and. It's sad, man, but it's out there. This is the, one of the nastiest scams that I've ever seen in my life. And they get actually they get paid a lot of money out of this such a scam. Mm -hmm. like people are because see this this type of scam it plays with the people emotion, you know. Exactly. It's different than, yeah, it's different than any other scam. This is emotion wise, and people actually donate, especially yeah. for the people in need. Yeah. So like it's actually so messed up in a way. Like like you can't believe it exists, you know. But exactly. it's out there. So there is another story. Going. Actually, I was visiting a place and there. There was a guy actually with his both legs are broken. Like I could see it in front of my eyes. And then he was actually asking for money. Uh, the people actually there's like he had, he put a hat on the ground and this hat was full of money because people felt so bad. Like mm -hmm. he's a poor guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then a guy out of he screamed like a guy from like a guy another guy another guy with the broken hands or whatever. He was screaming like police, you know, run. Mm -hmm. And I swear. To that, All of a sudden he started uh, running. He, he started running, his game, I don't know where he hid his legs, man. His legs came out of nowhere. <laughs> his, came, his legs came out of nowhere, and he started running, man. What the hell? Like, I, like, like when you see him, obviously he's disabled, a handicapped guy. Like, you, you know, even he has this, you know, the, this, the stick that, he, that he's going to lean on. Like, obviously, the, the case, like, when you see, like, you can't deceive your eyes, man. And I swear to God, he started running. Like, he has legs and running and, like, nothing wrong with him. Like, obvious scam, man. But now, that is so scary. But now that guy lost his spot, man. He no longer, <laughs> he was no longer like, uh, like, I don't think he had the courage to go back there and then collect like, money would, from man, people. He, would. he moved to another place? He would. No, he would go back. People in that place, I think it's a tourist place, so oh, people would I change, see. you know. I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he would come back, but maybe with a different style. Maybe now with, you know, with a broken ribs or something. Yeah, yeah. I have <laughs> seen some funny videos on internet as well. Similar, yeah. Similar in nature. Yeah. And by what, this type of scam, actually, as I said, it plays with the people emotion. You know, as yeah. I think this is the most effective one if you think about it. Exactly. This is what. If this is the most effective scam where you could gain a lot of money as well as you know people will not question you know twice you know it, they will just you know, right away it works on tourists the most because most of the tourists are actually coming from wealthy countries you know and when they see someone in distress or in pain they're willing to help and that's why they choose like tourist spots you know yeah exactly yeah and yeah it's sad you know where you feel that some people are legitimately in need more than those people who are truly yeah, suffering it gives like a bad yeah. image to them you know yeah uh, i mean speaking of uh gofundme scams like gofundme page scam i forgot to mention that i also know like one story so i don't know if you know about this or not like they were like couples this entire thing was made up or set up you know by this like but so there were basically three people a guy who played the homeless role and and, a, and then two other people a girl and a guy and they've just played the role of couples i think they were real couples 
So mm. they stopped the gas station and they didn't have like a, I think they lost their wallet or they forgot their wallet and this homeless man uh, jumped in and then offered his own last $20 for their gas bill. <laughs> And this thing actually caught the attention of so many people on social media. So these couples, these couples basically, they posted this on social media and then set up like a GoFundMe page. And man, they collected like, I think more than 100,000, like I don't know, 200, 300,000 something. Oh. The funny thing what happened afterward was that all these three guys, man, they started fighting over who gets the more share, you know? The couple was fighting with that what? homeless guy. So that homeless okay. guy, the homeless guy actually took these uh, two couples to court, man. He basically said that, hey, uh, I, I wasn't even given a penny. They didn't give me a penny. They only or giving me. They only actually bought me like some drinks and juice or uh, something to eat or something to wear. But they never offered me like a penny because I know like they set up like a GoFundMe page under my name, and they basically took all of oh. our money. And then people oh. started to question like more and more people came forward and then started helping this poor homeless guy they actually paid his court fee but the funny thing was that even this homeless guy was fake as i said you know after yeah. that like when when this guy like when nothing was happening you know like when this guy was not able to recover his money he basically uh, confessed to everyone that this entire thing was set up by all three of them yeah. by all wow. three of them so yeah they just <laughs> he actually exposed everybody. He said like everybody was in this uh, scam. Sorry for that. Uh, these two actually stole a lot of money from me because we were supposed to share it like equally. And because of the disagreement between the payment, you know, it even tried to scam each other basically at the end, you know. <laughs> <laughs> scam, scam themselves, you know. You're scamming, scamming, scamming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. I, I don't remember after like what happened afterwards like did they get back their money i mean those people when they donated i don't know i don't know yeah man they, uh, they should get refunded to be honest i think gofundme should uh, but see the problem with gofundme that some people like it's, it's around the world it's a global thing it's not yeah. like just people in place so i don't think they could you know gain verification of every single one it's hard. so it is a yeah, it is hard. It is hard. I don't know how could they could do it, but it is hard. Yeah. 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 Like always, like when like somebody posts, like for example, somebody gets bullied and they post like a GoFundMe page, or yeah. something happens to them and the the news goes viral on social media, people immediately like send money. So I don't know. Like people should judge it for themselves, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I should ethical thing as well for the guy who's posting i don't think those people are ethical enemies. no man no no yeah they're think about it because i'm pretty sure those people do have the essential of living you know some people they don't even have the essential of living and they're they're asking for help and they are not getting help because of those people who are yeah that's the thing them. like it, it gives like bad image to some people who are in legit need you know so you say like these guys are low individuals like they don't have any ethics or any morals at all like i know like a story of like back home so this small kid, like from in my back home country, like he had this cancer on his eye. Basically, his one eye was totally shut, and it was slow, like swollen so big that it looked like he actually had like another meat attached to his head. So, oh. so this cancer was not treatable, and a lot of people that were living like in North America, they, I mean, they, they like they they actually really, like really wanted to help this individual, this small kid. So this another. Uh, uh, guy, he set up like a GoFundMe page, uh, and he's actually also from my country as well. So he he was actually communicating between the kid and between the other people that were uh, donating money. So he was the middleman, mm -hmm. right? Unfortunately, that kid passed away because his cancer was not treatable. So this guy mm -hmm. was actually should have like given the entire twenty eight thousand dollar, right? The remaining twenty eight thousand dollar to that person's family because that money is a lot, a lot for that family. Because everybody was donating for under his name, you know, not to you, man. So, but this guy right. ran away and went to vocation. Uh, to, he, he went on vocation to Mexico. Man, the guy uh, stole money from cancer, from a cancer so patient who passed away. It, I don't know. Imagine, like, these guys don't even have like fear of God, man. Man, they don't even have. They don't even know God. What they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at least like have some sort of like a decency or moral or ethics something uh, nothing yeah. man yeah. nothing yeah nothing 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he made like a fake story. Like, so this is the story that and replied like, when a lot of people started like questioning him, like, why didn't you pay the remaining $28,000 to that family? Because we want, we donated our money to that guy, not to you. He, he said that I lost all that money because one day I was sitting in my office. A couple of guys knew about this GoFundMe page. They attacked me in my office. They stole entire $28,000 cash from my office and then they left, which is a bullshit story, to be honest. Nobody was buying uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. It is actually quite messed up, but yeah, this is this is the world you're living in, you know? It is, unfortunately, it is. So, shifting your topic to something else, like a scam still, but something, uh, as something like, I don't know if you guys, if you know about this or not, but probably we can share this tip to our audience as well about the open public Wi Fi. Do you know that they're also not safe? Yep, yep, yeah. it is not safe. Yeah, especially if you have your some credit card information in your phones, you know, yes. if, you, if you have nothing on your phone to hide, it's good. But other than that, don't do it. So, yeah, so here's the thing like, for example, if you're in Starbucks or if you're in a hotel and you have this open public Wi Fi, somebody sets up like another parallel network or another fake hotspots with a similar name. So, for yes. example, you would see like two Starbucks and you don't you're not 100 percent entirely sure like which one is legit so say for example you connect to the one which is a fake one so what happens is that like this guy in like can easily monitor you he can easily intercept your data in the middle he can see what you which websites you're visiting as long as those websites are not encrypted by https because most of like you know not all websites are secured by https so basically what happens is that he can easily see your data that's from wow. your phone if, if you're typing in your credit card information, if you're buying something online, if that website is not secured, you know, your credit card information mm -hmm. can be easily leaked to that guy. If you're like most of those like websites these days, you know, like they have they're using like secure HTTPS for login sessions as well as checkout sessions if you're buying something online. But in the middle, when you're surfing the Internet, or if you're searching something, it's not secure. But not all websites does that. Like there's still some websites they're not like using like. Uh, secure connection. Scam, all, yeah. Anyone can f fall for it, you know, because if you see a fake hot Wi-Fi hotspot, you will yeah, definitely connect yeah. to it. And it, you know, always have to read you, man. That's the best case, you yeah. know. Just keep your keep your, keep your own, yeah. like, use your own cellular data, you know. And the scary yeah, thing yeah. is that if you have your file sharing enabled, you can easily share your <laughs> own personal data and your personal files, you know, over the internet. I mean, there's like right. plenty of like videos and demonstrations available on YouTube. Like how someone mm -hmm. can steal your data over the open Wi-Fi. And another thing is that it's not about if you're typing something online or like or if you're serving something, if you're browsing on the internet or using your laptop. Even your apps, like the, with the apps, is super complicated because you don't know is your app using like HTTPS connection to secure or encrypt the data. Because not all apps like they use like secure uh, uh, connection. If, if, exactly. if they're not using like secure connection, they, you, your profile data can easily be shared, you know, with the hacker. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to share this with our audience just in case uh, they can stay safe, you know? Yeah. I got actually one time talking about scammers, uh, scamming. I got actually almost scammed, I would say, once in Ottawa. What happened, it actually, uh, I was actually about to, to buy a phone. I think it was an iPhone 7 at that time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was contacted through a guy through KDG, and then we talked back and, back and forth, and he gave me the specification. Uh, it was all good, you know? Mm -hmm. It seemed as legit, and everything was going well. Mm -hmm. And then I told where we could meet. He said, uh, and he was, he was a she, not a he. Let me, let me oh, correct that. She was a she. A lady? Okay. Yeah, man. No, she, yeah, she was a she, so... She said, like, I, I can't meet you now. It was that like, I gave her an address, a location, like a daytime, right? And it was a public place. So, mm -hmm. yeah, keep that in mind. Yeah. So she said, I, yeah, I can't do it now. I'm babysitting and uh, I have baby and I can't do it. And please, but I need this money and I'm wanting to sell it. Like she was, she was conveying my emotional side there. <laughs> and then after that, after that, I told, okay, okay then what, what do you want to do? He said, let's meet at this location at this time. Next was like, I think almost midnight, man. I what? swear to God. Yeah. And I said, let me, let me play along. Let me see what happens. 
Mm-hmm. I told him, okay, I'm fine, I'm done with it. And then he said, me, and then after that, like in the middle of it, like, so the day, so it was the day off to meet at, at almost midnight. So yeah. he, during the day, he told me, make sure you have the entire cash. Like, I don't want to go back and forth with you. Mm-hmm. And I told and I played like it was, I think, $700. I told him, like, I don't have 700 I have only 500 He said, fine, give me 500 and then the 200 we could arrange another time to, oh. <laughs> to meet and you could give it. Oh. I swear, God. yeah. And then at that time, I felt it's more and more shady, you know. Like yeah. I said, like it's um... that was alarming. And then by, yeah, and by the way, at that time, I think he he wanted it for Arna for more than that for a thousand. Then I dropped the price to seven hundred. Then he was agreeing on five hundred, even man. Yeah, wow. So imagine, yeah. So after that, after that, like he said, uh, the, you know, at at that time, he texted me. He said, "Okay, uh, I'm almost here. Where are you?" I thought I thought I was on the way. He said, "What do you look like exactly?" Mm. <laughs> he wanted that perception of you, you know. Yeah. And, and anybody, anybody with you coming? I swear to God, he asked that. He said, "Are you alone, or anybody coming with you?" Like he asked, "Who's coming with?" You. Like, man, obviously, like, what's going on? Yeah. He said, "Are you, are you alone, or are anybody coming with you?" I told him, "I'm alone. I'm a small Asian guy." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I. And, and then and then he told me what are you wearing? I told him I'm wearing a bas- uh, you know a baseball hat with jeans and uh, and uh, and a shirt. And I'm a skinny guy, uh, short guy. <laughs> I could make him more into it because I don't think he wasn't all the way there. He was like thinking about it. I feel like he was he wasn't that experienced type of scammer, you know. Oh. And he was too scared, too scared. I feel too scared to pull, pull a scam. So I was encouraging him. <laughs> exactly. What happened? I told him I'm a skinny guy. Yeah, I thought I'm a skinny guy, so I was encouraging him to go to that spot, you know. Mm. And then after that, he said, "Where are you? I'm here." And then I didn't text him. I just, you know, I just blocked him. So, but yeah, man, I was encouraging because you have to spend some money to go to that place, you know. Yeah. So I said, you know, let, let, let me let me just mess with him a little so bit. That guy went yeah. to that public place. Um, yeah, no, it wasn't a public place. It was a shady place, shady man. Place. It oh, wasn't okay. a public. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, but I teased him, man. I made him like so into it. So I yeah. thought like I'm skinny. I- you know, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I teased him, so he went to that place. It is a funny story, but it's actually, see, it happened. This type of scam actually happened to another guy. I know this guy. Mm-hmm. What happened is this guy uh, also actually was, or, or, he was into a, to the phone market, and he was getting actually, a, I think it was also an iPhone 7, man, imagine. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so he was actually so interested in that phone, so, and it was so low at that time, you know, I think he wanted for 500, and oh. this guy, like, this camera used, uh, I saw her picture, she was actually a blonde girl, a very, uh, very hot blonde girl with blue eyes, you know, <laughs> to, to, you know, to lure this guy, to lure that I guy. I see. <laughs> Yeah, it completely worked on that guy, and he went there actually. And then it was also, man. Apparently, it was also nighttime, mm-hmm. and the, then two guys actually they pulled they like they pulled a gun and aggress- aggressively robbed him. Man, they even took his his watch, his wallet, and the man. The messed up part: his wallet has his IDs and even has his SIN number. Man, oh. yeah. The messed up part, and he had some money, and then like he lost. Even they took his phone, man. Like he has the phone, they took him. <laughs> and, then, and the funny part, and then, like, I'm pretty sure they don't have guns, man. It was a fake gun, probably from the toy store. Okay. But he was scared, you know, he didn't want to risk it, you know? And, yeah, he lost everything, man. Like, he lost his wallet, he lost his IDs, he lost his phone, he lost his watch, and even he lost his shoes, man. They liked his shoes. <laughs> oh. so- <laughs> I don't know why they liked his shoes, man. They took his shoes. I see it's funny, but it is actually quite, you know, you don't want to be in that spot. But they took his shoes, they took his, 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 his watch, they took everything. And then, man, he was so pissed, this guy. And then, man, the, do you know what's the messed up part? No, no. His phone, his phone was locked, you know. Man, one of the scammers called him. Imagine. No. Because <laughs> in the world, he had his, his ID. I'm pretty sure he has his phone number in his wallet, you know. I actually, personally, I put my phone number in the wallet because... Like if if you lose it for some reason, maybe a good guy would get it and yeah. then he would give it back to you, you know? Yeah. So you always should put your phone number in there. So he has his phone number and then this scammer called him. I swear to God, do you know what he told him? Oh. He told him, man, your phone is locked. Could you give me the password? What the hell? I swear to God. What the hell? <laughs> man, he was, putting, he was putting, you know, fuel on the fire. How bold, how bold he was, yeah. man. I swear to God, he was so pissed off, man. Like he and he was so desperate, like he couldn't do nothing. 
-hmm. he can't track the phone. I'm pretty sure that's even the scammer, like when he called them, I'm pretty sure he used like a fake phone number. Mm -hmm. So yeah, imagine like they were so messing up with him and he told him like, at least give me the social ID, you know, I just need that, you know? Okay. It's hard. Uh, and then man, they didn't do nothing for him. Mm. I think I think I heard I heard a guy he told him like like give me the the social ID and I'll give I'll uh, I mean give me give me the the phone password and I'll give you the, your social ID I'll drop it somewhere for you mm -hmm. and you could grab it mm -hmm. and then uh, but yeah I don't think I don't know what happened then but yeah man so messed up imagine like people are getting scammed like this way you know yeah did he contact the authorities or police maybe like I like have, about the I'm, phone location for example when he received that call. I'm, I'm pretty sure, but they can't do nothing, man. I don't think they could do anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad. Really odd. Like there are some email scams as well, right? Like people receive yes. like emails either from, I don't know, from different countries like Nigeria, or Africa. I mean, Africa as a whole, or China, Iran as well. I mean, not Iran, sorry, India as well. And they also like yes. click on those phishing links. What do you think right. about those? Yeah. I those type of actual scams are the most popular ones, and people actually do get fall, especially the elderly persons. They do get fall for uh, for those yeah, type of scams. Yeah. Actually, and those are ton. I do get received like almost every week. I have I have almost one or two in my junk mail. Like it had exactly the same script, you know. <laughs> it's also yeah. It all talks about you know like we have some money and we can't put it in your, our bank because uh, some legal issues and my grandma died and uh, and I can't put this money to my account so could you deposit in yours please and I'll, I'll give you a cut out of it and it's like ten million dollars or twenty million dollars and but all yeah it's all about depositing money into the account and the main thing that they need from you are are four or five things is your name full name address. Uh, phone number and they don't even need your your banking information they just need your a uh, place to deposit the, the 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 money into it so they don't even start the scam they're just seeing who who would reply to that email but when the people reply the scam starts there oh. and actually sorry i read a true story about what happened in this case uh, uh it's a book actually called i don't have the name of it but I'll, I'll send it to you but it is actually a book about actually an egyptian guy he's a doctor mm -hmm. uh, from Montreal he got scammed he wrote a book about it mm. so what happened exactly the same story like we are from Africa my grandmother died and we need to deposit this amount and you felt bad you know he said okay I'll do it for you mm. and then he was starting in a conversation with those scammers emails just by emails and then the conversation developed to a phone number and they started mm. calling him actually mm. I mean, yeah and after that the third stage what what happened actually they came to his house man Whoa. I swear to God yeah, this is the scary part. This is where, you know, it's so scary. Yeah. And then because they agreed that like, we're going to meet and then he said, yeah, you find you could come in. And then actually they came to his said, those scammers. I, I think they are international. They have people everywhere. Probably, <laughs> Even the scam. Like, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's originating from Africa, but still people in Montreal, they knocked in his door and then they came in, they talked with him, you know, but they didn't do nothing to him. They just talked to him, you know, just to convince yeah. him more. Yeah. And after that he got scammed for almost thirty thousand dollars man thirty thousand dollars crazy amount. yeah it's yeah, gone yeah it is gone he got scammed it's nothing you could do about it wow. yeah but imagine so see the scam developed it was an email to a phone to in person you know imagine in person scamming you know yeah. into your house yeah. so scary and he called the police and then i think even after that uh the police was monitoring his house you know because he was scared you know because uh, like they wanted more money out of him mm. like imagine <laughs> Yeah, they were they were threatening threatening him like we know your address now. Imagine, yeah. we know your, you know we you know we, we know where you work. You know like they got the full information out of him. That's and so by the way, this is like a, yeah, this is like a three hundred. This is like a three hundred uh, page book, and that is like a nutshell. Mm. So yeah, uh, so imagine they they took his all all of his information. This is his, uh, his even man. They took his IDs, the number of his IDs, whatever. And then after that, he contacted the police and they kept monitoring in his phone number line and then they even monitored his house because he was so scared because actually he was getting threatened, you know? Yep, yep, for sure. And, uh, yeah, so imagine it starts simple, then it develops. So the best case is not even replying to those emails, you know? Even I know, it's, it's, I know I like to mess with them, but it's a waste of time and then your time. And at least you're wasting their time as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, you have nothing to do you do that but always be careful don't provide any information that's that's the key that's for sure like they, they also come up with different ways for example 
uh, I know like I have received some calls for example they say that they are from Virgin Mobile or from Bell Network they call you and then tell you that we need to just confirm like date of birth and then the conversation right. basically starts from there like they're actually yeah. not legit they're not from Bell Network or uh, from Virgin <laughs> Network they're just like scammers trying to confirm a couple of your uh, your uh, information because they may already have some information on you but they're just trying to uh, get some more pieces of information from you and, and then at the end try to scam you or apply for something on your behalf so I know yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. it's always start simple then develops yeah. man it's always start with simple question then it goes from there you know and the thing is that like it's like keeping is like staying safe like is your own responsibility like keeping yourself like safe from these camps like it's your own responsibility because for the law enforcement agencies like it's hard for them to track as well you know because they get like a yeah, lot of like, calls as well regarding these camps yes yes yeah there's always should be like there always should always be a red flag you know yeah. uh, pops into your mind you know, when when the, when they, when those things get beyond you know yeah. you're asking questions beyond their they were should they should need you know there are some questions that just immediately you should know that there's something shady going on you know yeah. especially when it starts to asking for what's your location what's your full name you know yeah. those those always should you know start raising a red flag in you you know I, 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 always, I, I mean we should always educate our seniors the most like because they're the the biggest target of the scammers you know because they can easily uh -huh. fall for those scammers like when they feel threatened by those scammers like mm -hmm. you know like they come up with like saying that usually happens after the tax season like they say that oh you haven't filed or you haven't reported this income uh you will be put right. in jail <laughs> this and that like, uh, yeah. yeah like so i have some tips for our audience like um mustafa you can add as well at the end so if if somebody calls you and if they have an english sounding name but speak with an accent hang up on them like do not provide the information do not confirm anything with them like you know uh, a best a best trick that i use personally and i also recommend your people other people as you said like waste your time play with them so he, here's what i do if somebody calls me and starts speaking in english i speak in another language and if you do not if you do not speak in any any other language you can speak up with your own made up language this basically pisses them off the most you know and then if they send you like an email or call you about the job which you have not applied, ignore it. Do not give them like your SIN number. Uh, some scammers, they already have information on you. They just want some extra information so they can apply for something on your behalf. If you answer those questions, you're a big victim to them, you know? And another mm -hmm. thing that I didn't touch, you know, if you're traveling to another country, because these things happen usually in other countries as well, like scammers, they attach it to the ATM. And when you insert mm -hmm. your credit card, that thing scans your credit cards and then saves yeah. all the information, you know? Even yeah. at the pump stations, it doesn't have to be ATM. They install those skimmers. Uh, when you insert uh -huh. your debit card, scan your credit card, it basically scans and gets, collects all the data related to your account, bank account. Uh, and, and the last one that I have is the never ever accept like e-transfers, especially for car payment, you know? Do you have anything to add on top of these, like Mustafa? I uh, see. I think the biggest key to cover everything is just to be educated on the most recent scams out there. Exactly, I just agree as well. Always, yeah, always, always look up the new, the new things out there, the new thing in the market and the, the scamming market. You know, always look for those things. It's very good actually to educate yourself, mm -hmm. because as I as we talked about, you might be getting scammed without even knowing it. So always educate yourself. That's the biggest key. Mm -hmm. And as you said, wasting those scammers' time is a good thing. And I, the, the funny thing as well, like what I do actually, I do get sometimes scam and with as you said people with accents so you know like sometimes the scam going on you know yeah. it's obviously a scam and it gives you like the most whitest name at least <laughs> and he's a guy in India so anyway, <laughs> yeah true anyway, I, it's just true actually what happened I, I got a call and then it was a scam like he has an accent so I learned a couple of bad words in <laughs> bad words in India <laughs> <laughs> if you like you go you go along with him and then when he reached to the peak point like when he asked deep information you just give him one bad word in his language and then you will see his reaction wow that's a good thing i'll definitely use this trick <laughs> yeah, yeah you will get to yeah you will get two reaction all either he's gonna hang up or he's gonna be very angry and he's gonna speak he's gonna scream back back at you with his own language you know cursing you back 
<laughs> this is this is how to make it humorous a little bit, you know, yeah. getting one out of it. I, I think so, we, yeah. have, we have to share that word with our audience. If they ever receive like a call from those scammers, now that bad word that Mustafa is talking about is bang chot, which means F <laughs> you. <laughs> there you go, you know it already. Yeah. yeah. And, there, and there's a mother chot as well. Oh, mother chot as well, yeah. It means like mother of her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah and actually it gets humorous a little bit when you do that like I did that and the guy goes so angry man he's scamming me and he's getting angry to be cursed at like that's the funny part you know and then he hangs up so always learn those you know bad words especially in, uh, you know Indian ones because I get most of the calls to be honest I get it from Indian scammers so it's uh, yeah unfortunately yeah yeah, he, yeah. I think the key to wrap it up is actually to be educated, you know, educate, always educate yourself on the most newest scams out there mm -hmm. and don't give any personal information. Any personal information should only be given in person, you know, that's the exactly. best thing. Exactly. Or, or by mail, or by mail, nothing by email, by phone, by mail actually should be legit. And sometimes it's not even, you have yeah. to call, you know, and see. But Yeah, I think you, like, you brought up a very good point, like some mails could be fake as well, so Here's my advice to people, if you suspect that uh, somebody that has sent you like a fake mail saying that your account needs to be verified or if you, ha you have some outstanding fines to pay, basically call back that organization or basically call exactly. back like the federal government if you have like an issue with your tax account, basically call them back and tell them, you know what, I have received this email, is this legit? And they will just verify it for you if you have really like problem with your account. Even if it's like a, something else, you know, it could be like a, your phone network. If you receive like a fake email or fake mail from them, just call them back to verify. Yeah, and you know, and you know the legit number, you know the legit exactly. number. So yeah, yeah, so it's not an issue. Yeah, here you go, that's it. Yeah, thank you so much, Mustafa, for your time. We definitely like learned a lot. I mean, I personally learned a lot like from your stories as well. Hopefully our audience as well, they can keep note of that. So. That's all folks for today, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, uh, stay tuned, stay safe actually, and for more quality content, please subscribe and hit that like button, peace.